What's up guys, Chooch out here on the King Song S20. You see right here, I'm leaving the Rev Rides RV. This is my first time ever on the King Song S20 right here. Now I've ran some footage that was me later in the day riding it around once I got a little bit better. I wanted to show y'all this. I wanted to show y'all my first steps ever on it. Now I think this might be beneficial to a lot of people out there that are maybe wanting to buy this wheel and being able to see uh, the first few minutes on the wheel and just how quickly I adapted to it and for you out there that have rode other wheels that ride EXNs, V12s, everything like that you can look at other videos of mine and then kind of look at how I'm riding this and get a feel exactly for um, the characteristics of this thing kind of the you can literally probably look at it and see the weight of it you can see how it the suspension rides, the handling, everything like that by looking at the other videos and co comparing it to this. Now, this is my first minute you're seeing right here on the King Song S20. And I can completely confirm that. Like whenever I was talking to Brett over there, that was if the fella looked like James Dean with the mullet. He's the uh, media guy for Rev Rides. Shot dude, I'm telling you, Rev Rides has a team up there. They got a media guy, they got excellent mechanics, they got everything set up well. And you see they're out at every event, but anyway, so I'm, I just said to the camera, this thing is epic right there. At my first minute and 30 seconds ever on this thing. And like, straight up, there's never been a wheel I've ever gotten on. I mean, never been one, guys. And I've gotten on wheels that, um, that are very similar in nature, back to back. Like, I rode the M Super or RS-19 st style of wheel for a long time. That wheel goes all the way back to 2017, or, or 2016 actually, guys. Uh, there was a M Super version 1, a V2, a V3, and you don't see any of these wheels anymore. Like, I've been in this hobby, like, a long time, and you don't really see any of the stuff you used to see. It's really growing and evolving so fast. That like even some of the legacy ancient wheels out there like I mean they're collectors items now guys, but I've never gotten on a single one single wheel ever that rode this good and this is literally my first two minutes ever on it and I'm already hitting probably 35 40 on the desert right here and really getting the full use of the suspension look at th these bumps over here are about half the size of a Volkswagen the ones I'm about to come up and hit I mean literally if you if you looked at them from the perspective of not a camera, I mean, they are, they are deep bumps. Look at that suspension engaging. This thing is going across where ATVs and dirt bikes are riding, guys. And you wouldn't want to ride an electric unicycle of any other kind out here on this same trail. I'm just telling you that. There's no other unicycle that has ever been made. Okay, I'll say this. There's one other unicycle out that would maybe ride good out here. And it would it wouldn't even be the S18 like the V the V11 from In Motion would ride good just because of the nature of it. I rode that out, like in bumpy conditions, kind of like this, but it would ride about a quarter as good as this one. This thing is the perfect size, and it just look at that. This is my first three minutes on it, and I'm already sending it off of every obstacle I can find. And this is legit my first three minutes and 50 seconds of ever stepping foot on this device. And I just realized that afterwards of like looking at this video footage because I took the camera over there whenever I wanted to get on the S20 because I didn't want to waste any time at all on the wheel where I wasn't filming. And you see this? I'm going in the first four minutes right here going into full on uh, deep sand and just ripping it. And just having a time of my life on it. It really performs well. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, you can see any other review I've ever done. And people, that's the thing. People say, oh, you always say every wheel is great. It's because I review the newest wheels that come out, dude. And, like, they, they make changes that improve the wheels. And so it's hard not to say that, like, a wheel is not better than the other one. Like, whenever I was raving about the InMotion V12... I meant it, dude. I took it out there. Y'all thought I was BSing. I took it out there and raced the thing, bro. Like, everybody was like, oh, he's just saying that about the InMotion V12. 
Yeah, that thing had a few flaws, but I took it out there to race it, so it shows that I like the wheel a lot. So, I mean, it's it's just one of those things, man, where uh, with most of these wheels, with them evolving this fast, the newest one, <clears throat> the new the newest one uh, is going to be just phenomenal. And this one right here, they really put a lot of time into perfecting this thing and refining it and dialing it in and the whole sensorless system in it so it doesn't use a hall sensor in the wheel whenever you're under power on it and i don't know the whole philosophy like whole philosophy behind this wheel um and the way that works but all i know is this that it just felt smooth whenever the wheel was in the air free spinning off the jumps and stuff like that there was never a landing that was just abrupt where it was just um like we're essentially like this there was never a landing where the wheel had revved up a lot and whenever i land it kicks me forward or kicks me back or it's just uneven you see that's nathan right there the owner of rev rides and you see him on a brand new s20 over there i took out, i took out the demo that was a little bit torn up a little bit just because of the nature of my riding and it's a good thing you know like it's straight up because i was able to go out there and just send it immediately and y'all can see um without any fear on this wheel how fast i was able to just take off on it now one thing that i really really like about this wheel guys is they took into account that people are going to be jumping it because it has the suspension and they also took into account that people that are quite heavier than i am are going to be jumping this wheel and i can feel that man this thing has power and it has acceleration like no other wheel out there like straight up it really does so most wheels out right now are 100 volt wheels if you looked at the race um from the video back if you haven't checked that out guys go check it out that's the apple valley race from this year recent footage most of you probably have seen it but man what a epic race anyways most of those wheels in that race were 100 volt wheels this one right here is 126 volts so this is going to be an all new uh dynamic man and i seriously in that class in that 100 volt class right there if they would like i don't know next year if they're going to have a 126 volt class just for the king song or what because this thing definitely feels just way better on the track i mean it seriously does i mean i rode that in motion v12 i even raced it but this thing with the suspension just feels phenomenal on the track it just works so good and granted you aren't using the suspension much your travel that you're actually using on the track is not much but you still can use a little bit of the suspension for your preload and your corners and the suspension keeps that tire connected the entire way through the corner really really nicely I'm getting a little bit of wobbles right there just because i'm testing it out i'm literally that's my first lap ever on the track with it right here and so the wobbles were just because I'm I'm testing the limits and just figuring out where the wheel is. Now, if I was racing and I was going full send on the beeps the whole time, granted, you, it's really hard not to wobble. Like on the V12, where I was literally riding the beeps on that wheel and just pushing it to the limit. Um, I mean, that's just where that wheel is, is, that's the threshold of it. I mean, 41, 42 miles an hour without the right power pad set up. Uh, all the way across the top of that thing uh one, one person definitely said hey you should just put more padding on the top of your v12 for that race and man if i'd have thought that through and all like straight up it would have been so much better because like like it's exactly what i needed i just needed more padding on the top of that thing to keep the chatter down and and whatnot and this wheel is wide and a lot of people were really kind of worried about the width you see the width on the top of this wheel like how far i'm standing i'm i'm a sh pretty short guy and this wheel definitely did not feel too wide and i was even kind of worried about that i was worried about it giving you like a kind of a bow-legged effect over time if you're riding it just because of how thick how wide the wheel is but it, it feels perfect it literally feels perfect even for a shorter rider like myself it feels fine and i think it'll feel right i think it'll feel fine for most people out there i really i really do I think most people will think that the, the whole dynamics, the weight, the build quality, everything about it is pretty daggum good. Oh, like the, the only thing I would really change on it 
is the way the power pads connect on the sides. I thought there was going to be some type of track system to where that you could slide them up and down instead of just sticking them on the side with like adhesive. And I mean, that's not a bad thing because a lot of people may even run aftermarket pads. But I really wish there was, I mean, that's one thing on this thing. Everything else is perfect. Like everything else is detailed, uh, nice components, nice dials and levers and switches and everything in between. The only, the one thing on it that's uh, just kind of not thought all the way through is just the uh, the power pads on the side. And that's the, that's the only thing I really noticed. I really wish that the power pads had some type of a, a, like I said, a track system to where they connected and clipped in on the side. And you could, and since the whole side is flat on this, where that battery casing is, you would be able to just um, move them up and down and then maybe even have like a track right or left in certain spots to re like to where you could really firmly adjust them in there and lock them in place and you could really move them around and get them right with this whole setup though you see that boomerang thing that's up on the front right there that little boomerang looking piece of plastic on there guys if you're kind of new to this wheel and what's going on that that thing is too as, that thing is a guide to be able to set your power pads right. And if you use that guide and you just kind of angle them directly off of that whenever you stick these power pads down with the adhesive that's given, you'll be able to get it, it pretty much dialed in perfectly. And so this wheel is not even mine. I just grabbed it from uh, the RevRide's uh, RV over there. This is one of their demo wheels. And it literally, I mean, there's no, uh, I've spent hours i mean i got ocd through the roof man and I've, i'll sit down there and try to get these power pads right nathan knows man nathan from rev rides tried to get my power pads right for the race in oregon man and i must have taken them off and stuck them back on 400 times dude i must have peeled that velcro off and stuck the power pads back on and then peeled them off and stuck them back on dude and i just it's so hard to get them right with a lot of power pads man but these just felt perfect. Just just using the little template right up on the front right there and just going with that. Um, I, that's amazing. That really is amazing in itself that that works like it does. And that template works so well for so many different riders, so many different shoes, and so many different um, postures and riding styles. I mean, you, you see how that thing is just hugging my toes right there? even though these aren't adjusted to my shoes or anything. And man, I, I really have spent a long time with all my wheels getting them right, getting the power pads dialed in. That's a big thing, guys. That's a huge thing. If you don't have your power pads right after you've been used to riding with power pads, you really, um, you, you, you can crash, man, like straight up, because you will actually go and like go to use your toes, um, in different ways it would be like riding road bikes um for a long time with clip-ins and then one day riding them without clip-ins you know and it's just weird man it's just so so odd that I, I mean you have to have once you ride with power pads you have to have them and i'm just saying that this wheel they're really good the whole the whole way they work the dynamics of them is incredible I just wish they were a little bit m more robust, and I wish they had a track system instead of an adhesive on them. That's all I'm saying. But overall, just the, the, the actual usability of them is incredible. I can't complain at all. And you see right here, this whole thing, of, like me getting in the corners and getting pedal scrapes, I'm just pushing the wheel, just learning about it. The more laps I would take on this thing, the, the better. This is only... This is less than 10 laps ever of riding this, this thing. I mean, you're seeing right here in real time of me progressing on the S20. Anybody getting the S20, I don't think you're going to be disappointed in the street performance. I think the ride's good. Only thing is, it's just like any um, wheel with a CST tire. When you apex your corner and lean in, and you get off those treads in the car, it dips a little bit. But you can fix that with any, any uh, tire. But it rides really good on the road. And I love the suspension for being able to set up for your corners. You can really use the suspension to 
power in and out of your corners and it helps you get a lot more traction. The suspension helps with traction. I almost want to race this wheel. And all right, so another thing is this is this is going to be a great way to explain this to everybody that wants to know it. The build quality like if you come in from riding a Gatway and I, you know I'm an avid Gatway fan. You, I, everybody out there knows I've been riding B Goad slash Gatway for years. I've supported them through the hailstorm of all the hate they've ever had over the years. I've always been a tried and true B Goad rider, bro. I've always loved those just old RS style M Super wheels. I've thrashed them in the woods, rode trails with them, uh, Rocky Mountain trails on those things, and beat them up for years and I, I love those wheels I really do be goad shout out for making a product that got me into such a an incredible hobby but this is one thing that people aren't going to say in any other review right here you take this wheel and you put it next to any other wheel out there guys beside like okay the two highest quality wheels ever are this wheel like that I've ever put my hands on straight up are the veteran Sherman and then this thing, like the nice, if you wanted to put the best looking wheel side by side with the highest quality that just look like showroom products, no frills, you put the S20 next to the Veteran Sherman. Um, and I mean, it. I'm just saying by looks and quality. Uh, uh, granted, I know what happens with the Veteran Sherman rims and all that, dude. I get that. But um, this thing, man, I'm telling you, like, straight up, this wheel just feels way more high quality than any other electric unicycle ever released. Like, I literally wouldn't put it in the same class as any other wheel that's ever, like, I've ever put hands on. I really wouldn't. I mean, it just feels and looks. I mean, even this one right here where the, the front bumper's been crashed off of, of it. I mean, even so, it's just quality, guys. The components, the build on it. I mean, the pedals out the box, everything on this wheel is just phenomenal. It seriously is. I, I, I It should not even be in the same class as wheels like, um, you know, like a MCM5 or a Gotway or a, a B-Goad RS or something like that. It's seriously just, you put one of an RS next to this, and I love the RS, straight up. Like, I wish I, I, I literally still want an RS. I, I ride an M Super Pro. It came out right before it, which I still love that wheel. And it's treated it's treated me really good, like straight up. And I, I even suggest buying like an RS if you don't have one before this wheel, because you can get a lot of value out of that before you buy a really expensive high end wheel like this. But I'm just saying, if you put the two next to each other, this thing just looks like the rich Carlton next to the Motel Six in quality. Like it just bro. This wheel, everything, every component on it, uh, the little, little, like little lift sensor on the back, um, the screen display, the shock, the 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 fact that there's metal exposed on the entire sides of it instead of like a plastic shell, it just looks like you actually have like a. I, I described it the other day to somebody like this feels like a like a military device compared to any other wheel that feels just kind of like a toy i mean this legit feels like military equipment i mean you could use this man you shit if they had this as infantry back in the day um uh, many countries would have been screwed if if they had to send men in on this thing right here because this is just incredible bro i mean it's so this is my first you're seeing right here this is my first 19 minutes ever on it right here because i combined all these clips that i have and if you're seeing some of the same exact footage from other videos, it's because this is all the footage I have, man. I'm laying it on the line right here. I'm just telling you all about the S20. So for anybody that hasn't seen any of that footage, they can watch everything right here that I got from this event. I'm going to be getting my own very soon. I hope that uh, companies seeing this show me, like, maybe, maybe send me a... A S20 man because I um I'm passionate about this wheel bro I literally am passionate about this wheel and this is all I've wanted in this hobby for years like straight up and I'm so glad to see it 
and I'm just, I'm stoked on it, and I'll make a ton of videos, man, like straight up, there's so much to do with this wheel, and I really need something to get my fire back into the hobby, man, like I love, I love that Commander uh, High Torque, I'm, I'm absolutely loving the Commander High Torque, but the only thing is, man, like long range riding like that, like that wheel is just for long range riding, I'm more of just a short range trail rider type of guy, where most of my commuting, like that's another thing people were concerned about with this wheel and concerned about range on it. And for most, for mo like I've, I've been a rider that rode a lot. I've been a rider that rode a little bit. I've been a rider that, that rode trails, that kind of just strolled around town. I've really, over the seven years, I've really changed up, you know, the type of riding I've done and how much I've rode in certain places and what I've rode and what I enjoy over that time but this right here is just right up my alley like for for the traditional type of stuff I like to ride guys um, it does everything so well and I'm not like most of you gonna go out and ride I mean we just don't have the time of the day man if you got stuff going on you got work and everything for the most part you can't find more than like three and a half to four hours to go ride and this thing will go man this thing will easily go with the thing is you can't be bouncing around on it so that's one thing that a lot of people aren't thinking about and if you're a heavier person and you you get on this thing it tempts you to where you just want to like pogo stick on it you just want to sit there and just bounce and bounce bounce and bounce over everything dude and so you're going to end up losing range if you're just purposely bouncing up and down on it and hitting jumps and doing all that stuff over over the course of your ride but if you're trying to commute on it and you're trying to just chill, what you got to do is either lock out your suspension or either just increase uh, increase the pressure on this thing, guys, to where you're not getting a, a bunch of bouncing effect on it. And you'll be able to get the range equivalent of any other wheel with the same watt hours. And so the only reason that this wheel would have any other, like any less range is just because you're losing power into that suspension. So all you got to do is if you're trying to get range and that's all you need if you're in a squeeze or you're just using it for urban commuting and you still want to have your Kingsong S20 to hit the trails and stuff with but you need to squeeze a lot of range out of it, you can just increase the pressure and the shock for that ride. And then you'll, I mean, it's essentially the same thing with like a mountain bike. Like a hardtail mountain bike, you lose... Uh, a lot less power on a hardtail mountain bike when you're pedaling around because you don't have that suspension back there just constantly bouncing up and down and every pedal stroke you're just losing energy into that suspension that's why a lot of people prefer a hardtail mountain bike because you can just get more power out of every stroke so i think that um with this wheel they pretty much did the best they possibly could with what they have right now i think they took the the best technology and batteries and cut the weight and put the perfect amount in there for most riders if you're a guy that really is like like i mean seriously pushing 300 plus pounds um and you want to get this thing and you want to hit jumps and you want to um still commute it at, at top speed on this thing and get um the rated range out of it it, it might not happen but i think for the traditional person that um understands what they're buying is not going to be disappointed at all. I mean, I think most people that have been into this hobby for a while understand exactly uh, w what jumping and all that stuff would do to range and all that stuff. So, and it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, you could do this all afternoon. Like what I'm doing right here, putting around and hitting like this doesn't drain any battery, guys. Like I've noticed that over trail riding. I trail ride in the Rocky Mountains and you would think that going up steep inclines and stuff like that constantly drain your battery. And it really doesn't, guys. Like the small scale playing around and fooling, it doesn't drain your battery quite much at all. What really does it is just your top end riding, guys. Like literally, when you're riding for sustained periods at the top speed of it, that's what drains your battery. It's not even the high torque hill climbs and stuff like that, surprisingly. It's just the high speed riding over long, long distances. So this wheel really benefits from just the dynamics of and characteristics of the way these things use battery for this type of riding where i'm just cruising around right here just enjoying the way the wheel rides 
in the suspension, you can get so much range out of it. And for your trail riding, jumping, everything like that, I think it'll last all day. I think you'll be able to go as much as you want. Anyways, I think this wheel is honestly phenomenal. And I'm a straight up a frugal guy. I don't like spending my money on something that isn't worth it. And I tell you straight up, um, I would would spend whatever it took to get to get this damn thing. I mean, it seriously is is sweet. I mean, and if you're into the unicycle electric unicycle culture, you got to have one. I mean, and if you're one that's if you are just seeing this hobby, and you're seeing this for the first time, you're the luckiest. Like, dude, I swear, man, you are so daggum lucky because if I got on this for my first time ever, compared to like the wheel I first got on back seven years ago i mean this is just magic i mean this literally is like black magic compared to the the wheels that were out in 2015 it freaking is awesome it, and I'm, I'm not just saying i love it i seriously love it i want five of them i i, I want 10 of them I, I i'd get rid of every almost almost every other wheel i have just to get a fleet of these damn things straight up and and i I'm not just saying that. I'd probably keep the veteran Sherman um, RS19, and then, um, I mean, this would even replace the V12 for me, dude. Like straight up, this would replace every wheel except for like the Commander, the Sherman, and I mean, it I pretty much would. Re I mean, it replaces the RS19 too. I mean, I I I would rather have this over two RS19s easily. So. <clears throat> do what you, do what you will with that. I think that this is a game changer. I don't think anybody's going to be buying um, just a regular axle wheel for trail riding anymore after these are out and after you can get them. I think it's just going to completely change the entire hobby. I, and all the trail riding I adapted to and, I mean, beat my knees up for years with no suspension on these wheels, guys that are just getting, I mean, they're going to be able to just, the same trails that just took it out of me, bro, and just had me busting butt, bro, clipping pedals, and just, I mean, having a good time, but having the equipment really limit me, it's just not even going to happen anymore. This machine is just going to be able to handle everything we wanted it to handle, and it's going to do it well. I don't think anyone is going to be disappointed in the ride of this wheel, and the range, and the power, anything. The only thing on this wheel, and I, I saved it to the end for, you know, I hope you're still watching. The only thing on this wheel that I think may be a problem, like a lot of people, is just the exposure of that canister on the back. So if you do crash this wheel, guys, that the I'm not worried about that front bumper breaking at all. I'm not worried of, really about any damage on the top of the wheel, because you can put as much pads as you want to on there. But one tricky thing is that canister on the back. And I don't know exactly, like, I mean, I've crashed bad in the Rocky Mountains where a wheel falls down a ravine, man. The wheel is tumbling down a ravine, and I don't think that thing is going to stay on that little um, uh, air canister back there for your suspension. I don't think that thing is going to be remaining on there <laughs> after a, uh, a few tumbles in the Rocky Mountains. So I think that people, if it's going to come like this, um, I think that people need to be 3D printing some type of guard for it that connects to the actual uh, suspension arms and braces over that whole entire back piece right there. So I, I straight up just how it should be, and I'll just give you the idea to do it right there. Now, if you can change the suspension out, which I, I assume you can, it's a modular suspension, it's just mountain bike suspension, then you can get suspension that might have a canister that's in a different spot where it's less exposed. And I think most of them are like that, to where that canister is not going to be exposed back there. Now, if you can deal with it and you aren't going to be a rowdy rider in the mountains and hitting Rocky Mountain trails, or you're not going to be crashing it or know you're going to be crashing it and you're just going to be cruising on this thing in the city, the suspension looks so good, I wouldn't mess with it. The, ca the canister on the back gives a unique flair and look to the wheel that I like a lot. And I wouldn't cover that up a bit. 
that's the one thing I see on this wheel, guys. Everything else can be padded up with that, like, baby bumper foam padding. Um, everything else can be literally made pretty much indestructible on this wheel, except for that canister that's sticking out on the back. And that's just one thing you got to look, look. I mean, that's the only thing straight up that I noticed on it that I, I would just was like, what? I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, that's stupid. Like, that's real stupid. And the kickstand on the back. Uh, I mean, they should, no wheel should have a damn kickstand on it, guys. I'm sorry. It just shouldn't. Just take them off. That thing clips you on jumps. Every one of them has been broken on every demo wheel. And it, it's up high enough for most riders, guys. But if you're hitting jumps or stairs or anything like that, you're just going to break this kickstand off. And even if it's broken off, it, you can still use it back there. But the thing is that even the mounts for the kickstand are just too low. Like, they should be angled up, man, to where you have to lean the wheel farther back. I was talking to Nathan about, about this from Rev Rides, and one thing that should be done on this instead of that whole uh, kickstand module back there is just use the suspension arm and have two of those like slider pucks that everybody put on their veteran Shermans. You know those like slider pucks for your for their frame sliders for a motorcycle, and just have those kind of mounted to the rear sh suspension arm of the S20 to where you can put it down, like kind of like little rubber stoppers where you lean it back all the way to that point and just do away with that whole fender and kickstand assembly. Because man, I even clipped it on the Inmotion V12. On somebody else's Inmotion V12, they got it stuck in the knobby tire and it fried the motherboard. On this one, it's just broken off. There's been no kickstand on any wheel that's worked out so far. And with this one going into production, with this one, it scares me. And I think most of the jumping guys should literally dremel off the entire kickstand arm. I, I straight up think you should do it before it snags you on a jump, before it snags you on stairs or something like that. For 98% of the riders out there, it's not going to be a problem, and you're going to love the kickstand. It's going to be great. Your wheel is going to look great. Fabulous, shiny, the kickstand's going to work great going into restaurants, everything in between. You got to think, man, when you're listening to me on this, I'm, I'm looking from the perspective of a off-roader for the most part. And I think this wheel is, I think this wheel is honestly great on-road more so than any wheel so far. So don't think this is just an off-road wheel. What I'm saying, though, is, is this, is that most people are going to love the kickstand. It's not going to be a problem, and that's why they made it the way they made it. The only thing I'm saying this for is just for the guys that follow my content, um, and especially the uh, off-roading and stuff like that, you really need to just go ahead and think through this kickstand on the back, guys. I mean, cut off those nubs with a Dremel, bend them, do whatever you have to do to make it where those things are not going to snag and get in your way. Because... The day that that kickstand caused me to crash on the V12, I literally went up in the air, guys. The kickstand came down, and I landed on the damn kickstand, and it just completely jacked up my landing. And that that crash pissed me off the most of, of any crash I've had in a long time, just because I did everything right on the jump, and then the kickstand caused me to crash. So um, that's the only thing on this wheel, man. Just straight up, just the canister on the back and the kickstand are just two things that um might might get in the way other than that everything's perfect on the wheel everything else is perfect straight up i love it i absolutely love it i think everybody should have 15 of them in their house anyways dudes it's been chooch i'll see you dudes in the next one